One thing, I guess, that was ended up being kind of fun, but wasn't necessarily fun in the moment. Uh, you had a pretty serious injury at camp yeah. playing basketball. So I guess talk about like just the injury part first, first and then we'll yeah, get yeah. on to what happened. For sure, for sure. So yeah, I was in an activity. We were playing basketball just behind us here in the basketball court. And um, I was playing with the kids. Usually I, I'm on the sidelines like, coaching them and stuff, but I, it was one of our last things, so I just thought I'd join in. And I jumped up for a ball, and then we were in a, we were in a big group of kids, and I came down, hyperextended my knee, and then it twisted and, like, just bent right out of place. And it didn't break or anything, but I felt it, like, something, like, pop or, like, pull or something. I felt something was wrong, and it was, it was painful, and, like, they had to cart me to the – to the uh to the nurse's station and i ended up commissioner had to drive me in and get x-rays and it was a really gnarly deal and i was all, honestly i was almost in tears like just like because i thought my whole summer was basically done at that right. in terms of physically being able to do anything and and i'm an extroverted guy so like well and as the sports coordinator well, yeah it's exactly kind of right to be it's off like to just, the side da, 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 da. like i yeah, never want to be i never wanted to be that coach that was just like yeah. wagging the finger you know like i want to be in there with the kids and help them out so yeah that was a really tough thing well and it already seemed like a blessing like your diagnosis from the doctor because yeah. you ended up what was it just like a sprain or a strain yeah he there said, was already a miracle in itself that first night because i remember i told you this i was sitting in my hospital bed waiting for the x-rays and they were telling me like at, just looking and assessing me at first they're like you like you it's it's bad like you know you're swelling like you they were telling me to prepare myself for like surgery in a six month like healing process like Crazy. and i i had this moment where i was in my bed and i just said lord like whatever happens i just give it to you and if if i do need that time so be it like i'll just more time to spend and you know be able to but you know there's not i don't want to be that situation but if right. it is i just I just lay this at your feet, whether it's six months, a year, two days, whatever. Yeah. And, just, and I'll honestly, yeah. I'll just interject for a quick second yeah, because sure. when I first met you, like that would not have been your mindset. No, you not were at all. so ready to just, you know, next thing, next thing. And why yeah. is this, like, why is this happening? Like this sucks. But the fact that you were even able to shift that mindset of, you know, if I'm not able to live life and experience life and jump around like I normally would. I trust God you're still going to do something through me and I'm going to learn yeah. new ways to minister in new ways. And I think that mindset switch was a big thing in itself and a big step of improvement for you in itself. Yeah, 100%. Because I've always been uh, just very like, you know, when you're when you're an extra, when you're extrovert, you like, I know you could probably relate to this. You get your energy from being right. around your people, your community, your family. You know, you get, that's what brings out the best. People bring out the best in you kind of deal. Mm -hmm. So it was a very actually almost humbling moment in that moment laying there in my hospital just to realize just to actually face the reality of like okay like I'm gonna have to be okay with the fact that I very well may be lying around a lot and having to force myself to to not just grow and learn more about God through with my community and the few moments that you know I spend but like be able to be okay that I might be alone a lot and that's a scary thing um just with you know certain things I've gone through in my life that I just being alone is a struggle for me. So mm. just to be able to realize in that moment and be okay with it, that was a big thing where, like you said, I realized I would not have been able to be okay with that. Yeah. Like, Even just like a couple months before. Exactly. Yeah. hundred percent. So it was a very humbling thing just to be able to realize that God, I trust you enough that I'm going to humble myself that even though this isn't what I want, I'm going to be okay with whatever it is you want for my life in this moment, in this circumstance. And that, and that's so good. And I think that, is a miracle within itself yeah oh yeah 100%. but we can obviously skip forward because we know <laughs> what happened to the real miracle yeah um and if you guys like moves of god then what happened this summer is right up your alley because we yeah. saw deliverances oh yeah kids speaking in tongues yeah. healings 100%. uh as we're about to get into so we entered one of our services and we have services every night yeah it's kind of fun throughout the day and then a service at <laughs> night and I literally carried you into this service. 100%. Because you, well, you were on crutches yeah. since the injury happened. And yeah. you were saying how, you know, your armpits hurt. Yeah. And I, I made literally a joke. was blistering <laughs> on my armpits. I was like, Zach, like. Crutches are very uncomfortable. Yeah, 100%. I was like, this is going to sound like a joke, but can you actually carry me? Like, my armpits are like blistering right now. Like, yeah, so I carried him. I don't even know how far that would be. I'm so bad at estimating yeah. distances. But if you've ever been out to ENR from Town Hall to the amphitheater, which yeah. it's a decent walk. Like it, it takes like five to 10 minutes, especially when you're carrying someone. Yeah. Uh, so I had him over my shoulder. Uh, luckily I was able to make it and then put him down and then we had our service and then there was time for ministry at the end. Mm. Yeah. And one thing that I want to point out is 
you know, you could have came up and said, I want prayer for my knee, which would have been perfectly normal and oh, perfectly fine. And but we were, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And we were praying or speak like, I think Thomas spoke on being filled with the Holy spirit yeah. and you came up for prayer, literally just saying to me, I just want everything God has for me. Like, that's all I want. You didn't even mention your foot, your knee, any of that, even though you came up on crutches and you said, I just want to be filled with everything. And then, you know, you can yeah. take it away from there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I came into that, that just that service and I was just sitting there in the front row. Like I usually did like, cause I couldn't make cause my you couldn't way get up, up the stairs. stairs. Like, <laughs> And I remember you had, you had actually prayed for my knee a couple times since, and nothing had happened. So I was Mm -hmm. feeling kind of discouraged like about that as, and I, but I had this moment where like, we were just starting to get into the ministry time and I had this picture in my head of this, this vision in my mind of this, of this, this, this dragon. And then I also saw this, this knight Mm. with like a big sword and like, but that's all I saw. And they were in two different separate things and I was like and then in that moment I just got this fire like burning like in my soul like and I'm I'm, I'm definitely the kind of guy I, I kind of I wear my emotions on me very clearly but definitely just, yeah 100 <laughs> uh, percent sometimes to my disadvantage but I'm God's working on that with me right now but um but anyways I just felt like just this I felt almost like a football player just ready to charge out of the tunnel mm, you know kind right, of deal and I, yeah. I remember going up to you and just had this like just this dude I don't care what God wants to do to do right now but just i'm ready whatever he wants to do just lord do it so you started praying for me and at first it was kind of like just kind of like just a bit of the deliverance and just like just some intense prayer and then i remember another one of our staff members uh kona or ashton is yep. her name is she came over and when she started laid hands on my shoulder i got that picture came back except i saw this knight stabbing the dragon mm. with the sword and I was like, oh my gosh, like that was, and then I, I just remember feeling this surge, like this, the, I mean, and I mean, the main way that I, that God communicates with you, I, I'm naturally a feeler, like feeling the presence of God and the Holy Spirit is okay. naturally how right. I'm used to hearing it. But it was like, even for me, it was like, I'd never, Intense. it yeah. was like wild. And it wasn't yeah. just even, it was like something is going to happen. And then I think I started like, honestly, I can't even rem- like some of it's because bl- it was just so like intense, but like, I was just like, it's happening. I just started, I think I, yeah, I was just like, it's happening more. More people started going, and then the kids. This is where it really got wild. Yeah. The kids started seeing what was happening, and then all of a sudden, these ki- I'm actually just getting chills Come right on. now. This is so about, good. But the more kid, and here's the thing: I had my eyes closed for most of the time. Yeah. Um, but I could feel and hear the kids coming over, and the more kids that, and I could feel they're like tiny hands, right? Like yeah. the, the more kids that kept laying hands, I kept getting the vision of this, just this night. He kept stabbing this dragon man. The dragon started like, like just like it was like getting, and I was like, it's happening, it's gonna happen. And then my good friend Mustang Tom, uh, he came into the middle, and he came right, and he started. I'm um, just knowing me a bit more personally, just started praying some very specific things as these kids and faith was building. We felt it. I mean, I know you, you can probably add to your point of view what was happening here, but it was just like the faith was building. It was building. And then finally, it was probably like a good half an hour. Yeah, it say. was it was a lot of persistence. Like, yeah, and I think that's that's the great thing is obviously when you pray for healing and it happens like that, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a miracle. For sure. But the fact that it was literally probably 30 minutes of persistence, yeah. there's a battle, not going just on, from dude. you, yeah. but like for me, Mustang, Ashton, but all these kids, like they were in it oh, for yeah. 30 minutes, praying, praying in tongues, just crying out to God and just, it kept adding and adding. So yeah, oh, yeah. Like, like I think the time that you brought up is actually very key because oh, yeah. the Bible does talk about persistence and yeah. prayer and persistence 100%. and staying locked in. Yeah. Right? We're in so, a battlefield, man. Like yeah. we're, 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 there's battles that are going on. And, and then I remember I started taking steps and people just, yeah, you st- slowly stood wild. up. Well, it was wild. And then the walking. last final, Oh dude, I got so, so many chills. I was standing at the bottom of the stairs. I was standing without crutches at this point. Yeah. And I stand, they, everyone's like, run up the stairs, run up the stairs. Yeah. We're in an, so you gotta keep in mind, we're in an amphitheater. So like the stage, the 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 stairs go up from the stage they don't go down and i'm looking at the top stage and i remember in my mind's eye i saw this 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 picture this 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 thing this like very intimidating thing whatever you want to think of it as standing at the top stairs he was looking down at me but for the first time in my life i didn't feel scared but i did have that last moment of doubt and i looked down at my feet and i'm just like oh am i really gonna do this and i looked up and then now it was jesus wow. he sat, and he put his he just he didn't even say anything he just smiled at me and he put his hand out and just Ooh. like, 
you, for you sports nerds out there, Rocky Balboa, I just yeah, went running yeah, up those stairs. Yeah, you and did. I, ju- I literally started jumping at the top stairs, like full healing, full res- restoration, like full 100% jumping up and down. And kids just were. They started running, running up, up after you, jumping with you. And then kids were like, were like coming up and they just were like. And then they started praying in tongues and like, it was like, it was insane. It was, it was, and that led into like probably another two hours of like all these kids were praying for each other and some people were crying, some people were singing and then we had worship and we were all dancing. It, and was, it was literally one of the best nights of my life. Oh, and I'm sure it was even it was greater for you. Too. Oh, right. Like, I forgot about Jesus's that. What a birthday, birthday present for me. Yeah, it was, it was wild. <laughs>